you've learned cap versus pendulum. Now what comes next? Drex here from Drex Factor Poi sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today we are diving into some of those tricks that you can learn next after pendulum versus cap. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And a special thanks to the first non-business friend of the channel, Johnny Howard. Thanks so much for your support, Johnny. You know the thing that happens when you learn a brand new trick and like you know that there's five or six other new tricks to learn out there, but you're kind of like, you know, I kind of just want to have the accomplishment of having gotten this thing done. Are there any variations out there that, you know, I can learn fairly easily with the information that I already have? And that's where this series comes in. It's not quite a tutorial. It's not a combo. It's what comes next. And it is going to help you connect the dots between the things that you already know and the things that you could be doing with it. And normally I take requests on these, but this is part of a two week series wherein I'm taking on some tricks that I like and I think are cool, but I'm still open to suggestions. So please leave them down in the comments and I will be checking those out to make videos on them later on in the month and in 2022. So what inspired me to dive into Cat vs. Pendulum? Aside from the fact that Cat vs. Pendulum might just be my favorite anti-Brit of all time, I also realized that there are several tricks that are variations of it that can be had with only minor tweaks to what you already know how to do once you get the move down. And they look so radically different, but open up a lot of other things that I thought that it would be a fun thing to explore with you all. So let's dive in. These first two variations actually are more or less the exact same thing you've already learned if you've got cat versus pendulum down. We're just making some minor tweaks to it. And first among those is going to be cat versus pendulum with the cap on top rather than on bottom. It seems really obvious once you say it out loud. I mean, after all, that initial cap is hanging out down below. There's no reason it can't go on top instead. And there's something really satisfying about this one, having the hand and poi head meet up at either side, almost like suggesting that there's a relationship that's coming and going and locking back together when it's important. It's also super easy to switch back and forth between the bottom and the top one. So if you already know how to do that bottom one, this basically just doubled the amount of stuff that you can do with it, right? I also have to say I've been enjoying this one because it makes for a great transition into those linear isolations that go across the middle of you. Give this one a shot and see how it feels to you. All right, so next up is going to be pendulum versus one pedal in spin, which believe it or not actually splits the difference between cat versus pendulum and the one that we just covered. So here's the thing. This is actually exactly the same thing as our cat versus pendulum with the cap on the bottom. The only change that we've made is that we've switched having our hand go back and forth across the bottom and instead we're having it complete a full circle, creating a flower in the process. Now the C cap fundamentally is really just like doing a massive arc and then coming back and doing a little loop in the middle of it. The only reason that that loop looks like an anti-spin pedal when we're doing this in a back and forth C pattern is that we're going back against the direction of the poi. When we're going with the direction of the poi, that just turns into the pedal of a one pedal inspin flower. I'm a really big fan of doing this, not only because, again, it just completely opens up more possibilities for what you can do with the move that you already know, but also too, that spot up top where you're doing the pedal is a great opportunity to break into some other anti-brid hybrids, such as another favorite, isolation versus cat eye. Okay, so before I share with you my final pick for what comes next after you learn cat versus pendulum, I have a huge favor to ask, and that is, if you've come this far, it must mean that you have an interest in poi tricks, learning poi, flow arts, etc. and I make lots of videos on those topics. So if you could please give me a subscribe so that you're the first to know when I upload a new video, that would be super awesome. It also helps people find my content and it helps the channel grow. And of course, if you have suggestions for tricks that you'd like to see me cover in future installments of what comes next, leave me a comment and let me know. In most cases, those comments directly determine what I make these videos on. And now our final variation is going to be a static spin versus cap. Wait, what? So here's where it gets kind of funky because this cap that I'm performing is a mixture of a linear isolation and a point isolation. Now, the thing is, is that as you're coming out of cap versus pendulum, this aligns the poi in such a way that you basically have an anti-bridge shape going over top of the entire thing. And I, for one, think it looks amazing. 
The only catch here is that that cap versus static spin is really unstable. You can only get one rep into it, or at least I can only get one rep into it before I have to switch back to that cap versus pendulum. But going back and forth between the two of them, I think looks really cool. I first nailed this one at Kinetic Fire Festival years ago, and the moment I hit that anti-bridge shape going across the top, I knew that I'd found something really special. Still to this day, this one is a favorite. If you can get down those tricky linear isolations and point isolations, Add this one to your toolbox. I promise you, you won't regret it. And dear friends, those were my three picks for what comes next after you learn Pendulum versus Cap. What would your picks be? Did you like this video? Do you like flow sessions, tutorials, and yes, what comes next? Well, it is my mission to bring poise spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies as creative individuals. So please help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. There you can get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future, plus some great extras and behind the scenes content as well. So go check that out please and thank you. And of course, a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind support of these wonderful people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Thank you all so much for supporting my work and helping me get the word out there. Y'all rock. What are your favorite variations on Pendulum versus Cap? Leave me a comment and let me know. Did I hit up your favorite or did I miss a really, really obvious one? I would love to know. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link down in the description to a bunch of tutorials on a playlist that I have done on other What Comes Next moves, as well as up on screen if you happen to be watching on YouTube. Make sure to get outside and flow, even if it's cold, and I will see you with a brand new video on Monday. Thanks so much. See you then. Peace.